Getting consumers to engage with your content. Now this is thoughtful. Hello, I'm Clement Sang in Shanghai. In Hong Kong, Sydney, Seattle and Saigon, and all points in between, there is only one global leader in online video distribution. Google's YouTube is so massive, so central to the viewing of nearly 50,000 hours of uploads per day, from grandma's cooking lessons to impossibly cute baby and kitten clips, that nobody ever mentions a YouTube competitor. Here in China, with an online population rivaling every other country on earth, there is no YouTube. But there is also no crowned king, and distribution's royal family is only starting to take its seats now. At the table includes heavyweight Yoku with its merge partner Tudo. But Baidu is hardly willing to drop its mantle of content authority, and about 10 other major player platforms like Tencent and Alibaba are vying for the throne. Some private, some public, some broke, and some broken. It's still very much early days here in China. Here to help us make some content of our own today is Chris Tung, CEO of VML IM 2.0. Ali Kazmi, Head of Social for Omnicom Media Group, and Scott Pollock, EVP at Thoughtful Media Group. And I'll share a thought or two about some of the challenges I've seen marketers make in China's online video market. But first with us is John Cook, CEO and President of VML, global digital marketing agency who's going to shed some light on content marketing and content creation trends in the US market today. John, thanks for coming in today. Thanks for having me. I know that you've been busy building out the global footprint in both Poland and in China through your acquisitions, uh, building out your global footprint. Can you tell us what's the importance of emerging markets for you? Yeah, we started global. VML's been around for about 20 years, and we started in North America and, and started globalizing about 10 years ago and have really put the focus in the last couple years on emerging markets. So. As we looked at our global network, uh, the missing piece we had was China, certainly a, an emerging market. And uh, we feel like we, we've been globalizing for a few reasons. Emerging markets are very important to us. Uh, I think for a lot of companies, it's, it's only to, uh, to have a presence in that particular country or that particular region. For us, it's really twofold. We want to be able to do very specific local marketing in regions like China, where you can't just take a global message and, and slap it into the region. You have to be very specific. And the second reason is we like to, we think our company's better when we have the perspective from an emerging market on all the work across the rest of our globe. So as we do more and more local marketing in China for our clients, not only will that help those brands be successful in China, it will help other brands at VML around the world learn and be smarter because of our work in the emerging market like China. So we get smarter around the world, not just have success in the local market. And that's, that's, that's very important to us. So with your global network uh, and the idea to share insights from each market, um, do you see the potential of the 60% of non-US based YouTube traffic being an opportunity for your advertisers? Yeah, it's, um, I think I th it's, it's, it's a huge opportunity for us. Um, I think a lot of you know, YouTube is being bought through Google AdWords right now, and I think you know, a lot of that coverage doesn't expand around the world. And I think as more and more marketers begin to see the power of being able to measure the involvement in content around the world, the ability to, to reach somebody uh, in an entertainment or a, uh, you know, a different context than just advertising, I think the, the global usage of those channels will increase quite a bit. And I think that it's, um, that will happen both for brands, um, but also um, entertainment networks. And you have a brand like a, like a Red Bull in the United States, a global brand, but certainly started in the United States, and they've taken YouTube and created a global presence by creating their own channel, their own network. It has millions of subscribers. And I think they've done a good job of blurring the line between you know, what's entertainment and what's advertising. And it's, it's, it's as if it's another network. And I think that's, that, will, that will continue to grow as a trend. But then there's also um, you know, areas that have stopped, that have, have grown, uh, like gaming channels. So whole content channels around a particular topic. So to reach young 18 to 24 year old gamers, entire channels grown up with millions of subscribers just dedicated to gaming. That's a, that's a phenomenon that's really started in the US through YouTube that will continue to, to shape the way the world consumes content. 
Given that YouTube is such a significant channel, uh, are they an easy platform to, to relate to or to manage from an agency perspective? Yeah, there. I, I wouldn't say it's easy um, because if it was easy, everybody would do it. But it's uh, they've made it. They've made it very easy. So they, I think, um, YouTube and other media channels, uh, you know, like YouTube, Facebook, Google, etc. They've all put a big premium in the last couple years on working with agencies directly. And that used to be a little bit of an adversarial relationship because there was a perception that those channels would go directly to the marketers and that would cut the agency out. And that wasn't necessarily true, but it was a perception. And I think as an agency leader and an agency marketing practitioner, it's, it's been really refreshing and uh, very helpful, the, the, the focus that, that YouTube and others have put on working directly with agencies. They respect what we're trying to accomplish with brands. They respect our relationship with the brands. And they respect the creativity that comes out of an agency that you don't always get from those media channels. And so I think with their increased focus on, on working with agencies, it's not a coincidence that our work has gotten a lot better in the channel. So what is some of the key learnings that you can take from the U.S. that may be applied to, to China? I could probably list several examples, but I think, I think one is, that, uh, is, is in the category of mobility. And what you see a lot of in the past in the U.S. and still to this time is somebody will take the time and energy to create a mobile advertisement in a content environment like on a YouTube or a Facebook. They'll put all the, the right energy into creating a mobile ad there. But when you click on that ad or that brand unit, you're quickly going to a, a traditional landing page or a page that clearly isn't optimized for mobile, either in its creativity or in the way it's measuring. And I think that one of the things that the U.S. has gotten a lot better at, and I hopefully us as an agency, is considering that mobily optimized path from not just the mobile buy in the content environment, but all the way through to the, the final transaction, whether that be a, an engagement, a share, or a purchase. I think emerging markets that are, that are getting deeper into social media, and certainly China's been there for a long time, can learn from that and, and to truly optimize not just the mobile buy, but the mobile click-through, where, where a lot of times people forget to, to close that entire loop from a mobile perspective. So John, you've mentioned the Wendy's case a couple of times now. Why don't you give us some context into this great campaign? We had to create a way for the, uh, the campaign to work without giving away product. And our thought was, what do people really love more than free food? Well, they love seeing their own name. They love talking about themselves. And so our campaign was, every time you or anybody tweets or mentions the sandwich, the pretzel bacon cheeseburger in social media, you'll have the chance for that to be sung in these really cheesy, really funny um, love songs about pretzel bacon cheeseburger. And it's over the top hilarious. And it's famous, um, a famous boy band artist and several other mock artists singing your tweets. So whether if you, even if you had a typo in your tweet uh, or your social media, that was sung right back to you in social media. So the incentive, rather than a coupon, was seeing your name in the bright lights of social media. And it worked incredibly. It sold millions of sandwiches and uh, I think more importantly, it, it, um, it gave a lot of validity to social media as a, as a, uh, and content as, a, as a, a lead engagement way of, of launching a product. I'm hungry now. Let's take a look at this clip. Yes, yes, I am on board with Wendy's. Pretzel bun Hashtag Bring it mm. Fireworks In my mouth hole Well done America pretzel burger joke before giving up cause it actually sounds delicious If you want your comments sung, try Wendy's new pretzel bacon cheeseburger and then share the love. 
on Facebook and Twitter. This could change everything. John, thanks for coming in today. Thanks for having me. Let's take a break to hear from our sponsor. When we come back, I'll share some of the thoughts and challenges that marketers face with China's online video market. The advertising industry has always been viewed by outsiders as the purveyors of cool. But is washing powder and fast food really cool? They are to many netizens in China. How can brilliant creative directors continue to develop branded content driving brand uplift via 30 second TVCs in a world where audiences have so many options? I think that marketers traditionally have maintained control over communications through paint and owned media. The enablement of two-way conversations via digital channels has positioned earned media as a potentially risky and difficult channel activity to manage. With Sina Weibo, WeChat and WeChat emerging over the last two years, some advertisers have opened up their planning goals to include a participatory objective and in integrating earned media. Now, leading case studies have proven the business value of earned media and the success of future communications becomes a question of control. Marketers need to take a risk and enable and incentivize the audience to participate and advocate for their brand campaigns. With us now is Chris Tung, CEO of VML IM 2.0, Ali Kazmi, Head of Social for Omnicom Media Group China, and Scott Pollock, EVP of Thoughtful Media Group. Guys, thanks for coming to the studio today. Thank you. Chris, welcome back to the show. Since you've been a regular guest on our panel, let's start with you. Your agency, VML IM 2.0, as advertisers like Dell, Adidas, Kraft, and Hire. What is their content's perspective? What is their strategy for 2014? What makes them different to the US? And what type of content are they creating? OK. Uh, we're in this process of uh, clients' annual planning for 2014. I'm pretty surprised to find that uh, how much emphasis they're putting on uh, content for next year. In fact, they're uh, mentioning to us explicitly that content strategy as well as content creation capability building is one of their key priorities for next year. How do you measure if that's working or not from a brand perspective, from an earned media perspective? And how does that correlate then to how you manage the media channel? Um, so uh, there, there, there's a couple of different metrics, right? And so they're the classic uh, TV metrics that we use, the GRPs. But they're also the PR metrics, so the number of times a brand's mentioned, and therefore we try to draw an equivalent in terms of what the value or what you know what the value of that uh, brand being mentioned on screen is. Then we couple that with the number of times that brand, um, the brand or a brand-related attributes have been mentioned to the social feed of that content. Um, so I think um, you know in terms of in terms of uh, uh, in terms of having the right tools um, to measure. Um, uh, 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 brand impact in real time. I think that's still that's still something that the industry is trying to, uh, de to to develop. We still have you know we have we have uh, the conventional uh, scenario uh, A/B testing type type metrics in place at the moment. Is there a, a play for brand advertisers in terms of their positioning, what type of category they're in, and the types of fans that they already have existing? I'll give you an example. If you search Toyota on Yoku, you actually find thousands of Toyota drivers using their mobile phones to record GPS routes. Versus if you search BMW, it's much more engaging, it's much more sexy, it's a different brand positioning. Um, is there a story to tell then from, from a UGC versus licensing perspective, is there a, a going to be a shift in the next year or the next two years in China? I continue to value the importance of UGC. Like I said earlier, we probably cannot rely on consumer to create the whole thing. What, uh, however, the constraint of branded content is 
normally we, uh, the creators create the content already. So we have to find a way to either place the Prada or find a way to link the, the, the store with the Prada or the brand somehow. Uh, it could be less impactful if we do that that way. Uh, the opportunity with UGC or co-creation is you, you get to play, uh, the brand get to, to create a platform for users to play with you. The, the brand message will be much more powerful, much more relevant uh, to the consumer and their friends. So with the social media contest in China, I, I think it's still important, but the model could be different. It's not pure UGC. It could be what we call user engaged content. You create uh, interactive features and simple, and easy, fun, for, for consumers to participate as a, a few clicks away, they will be able to create something like customized content with their own involvement in it. So that could fun, be fun to share out and get more retweets and forwards, so on. So something like that continue to be important in particular in China. Yeah, let, let, me, let me say that uh, we believe that, that China will have uh, one of, if not the most vibrant uh, content uh, or video content creator communities uh, in the world, uh, it's a matter of time. Uh, and, and what that will mean for brands is uh, new and exciting opportunities for integration because ultimately, you know, the channels that have succeeded, and there's, there already are some in China, they're just relatively few compared to what you see on YouTube outside of China, right? But the, the relationships that the celebrities or self-made celebrities in most cases on those channels have created with their audience uh, is incredibly powerful and brands uh, are, are figuring out all kinds of great ways to leverage those relationships and to, and to as Chris said, to, to have a better dialogue with their audience, with their target audiences. Now, you ask why is it that in the largest internet population in the world uh, and one that is so voracious with its appetite for a video that you don't already have the largest creator community in the world and, and really the, the, the one missing element has been money. Okay, uh, YouTube as was mentioned earlier uh, years ago opened up the rev share uh, plan if you will and said uh, we want to make the pie bigger and the way we're going to do that is we're going to share the ad dollars with creators and that has really snowballed and the floodgates opened up and everyone's won including YouTube. Uh, you've got thousands of creators or thousands of channels now uh, on YouTube that are making six-figure incomes per year. I mean that, that's real money. People quit their jobs. Now here in China we've seen of late uh, the player platforms starting to open up uh, and starting to do some revenue share. So that's, the door is open to crack essentially. Um, the, the question is how long will it, will it take for, for those player platforms to realize the more we open up uh, the, the bigger the overall pie will get the better it's going to be for everybody. Yeah the other thing is we have to we, we do not want to forget the importance of the role that uh, co key opinion leader can play in this whole, whole thing. Uh, I think KOL is becoming more and more important in this whole content creation process. They, they have the, the license to create something really relevant to their followers and they do have the network. So um, how do we scale up a program? How do we make sure that we reach enough uh, target audience uh, for the brands? One, one key thing is really find uh, the right topic and really how to le leverage the KO network to maximize the content creation process and really you know, scale up the, the reach is something very important, particularly in China. Mm. I think I mean the, the idea of consumer technology is also enabling that shift from originally text to then pictures, to rich pictures, to now the potential to share UGC video. Um, I mean, I, in my own circle, I have a, a, a KOL that told me about the Honda Road Movie, which basically is a, a mobile app that allows you to take very short pieces of video with a piece of music and create a produced video straight away. Uh, when I made it myself, wow, it was incredible. It was just, it was literally a movie that I made in 30 seconds. That's right. So, That's exactly what I talked about. Yeah. yeah. And that, that was brought to you by Honda. So yeah. I think the, the positioning of the ad advertiser and the technology will probably lead to much more UGC or brand loving engagement. Yeah. 
I think what's going to be more important for brands, though, so, um, with, with increased UGC or the ability for, for consumers to create content, is the need for cut through. Um, and so brands are going to have to tell a much better story. Uh, brands are going to need, um, you know, they're going to have to hype up their heritage. There's going to, you know, and their heritage and their legacy. Uh, a point that I wanted to make earlier was, you know, when we look at brands like Apple or Chanel, um, even BMW for that matter, when you mentioned earlier, right, they, they focus entirely on, 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 on having great quality product um, that has great heritage and it sells for itself, and they let the consumer talk about it, but they don't get involved in the conversation, right? So that's sort of a, cha that's, you know, that's a challenge to the entire industry um, on creating products versus, um, versus overselling them online. Um, so, you know, even in this world where UGC um, or user-generated con content is, 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 you know, is, is, um, is on social platforms, there needs to be, you know, I think for brands, the challenge is then going to be to make sure that they're, they've got a much stronger st story to tell as well. I think that's why, you know, now that you're seeing mobile video apps being the number one downloaded app segment, uh, that's a huge role for that technology enablement. Uh, and then to connect that into Weishi and to WeChat, I think that's the future challenge for advertisers and agencies for planning in 2014. Uh, do you have any thoughts about that huge hurdle that everybody has to cross? I think for us, it's really going to be a challenge of, of um, identifying what channels. Um, so if we, you know, from a social perspective, I think for me, the biggest challenge is going to be um, abiding by that 1990 rule that we, that I use a lot of times when we talk to brands, making sure that the content's been tailored to that 1%, knowing and understanding where that 1%, how that 1% journeys online and being able to tailor that, cost, uh, that content to the environment where that 1% sits in the digital space and making it formatted in a manner where that content then gets pushed out to their um, circle of friends. Um, so the technology is, is, um, is not necessarily there. The, the means to measure are still work in progress, but the ambition is um, to be able to counter or to be able to have um, the metrics in place to manage that content so that it's distributed at the right places, as opposed to it being led by um, um, a client relationship with the media platform. Um, and so a point that I mentioned earlier, when a brand goes into the marketplace, wants to produce content, they have to work with every single video platform in China or else they, you know, it, it makes it difficult for them to move forward should they have another campaign. But then data and having the right metrics in place and making, you know, that's going to really make a lot of difference in the future. And we'd really like to be in that position. Well, one thing I would, I would add is, is that um, we're already seeing huge growth in the amount of uh, money or that's be, the ad, you know, money that's being spent against uh, video, obviously, because, because clearly, you know, when you, when you look at what uh, consumers in China uh, are doing, uh, video tends to be way up there. I mean, in mobile, I think it's, it's number two only to search. So um, that's happening. The, the money's also going more and more against UGC, which you know, is, is clearly sp small today, but, but is, um, is growing you know, by over 100% clips per, per year. And one of the things that I think we will see um, you know, in, the, in the next year, two years, is uh, what has been happening on, on Weibo, where you've got the KOLs that Chris mentioned, uh, getting involved with brands or brands uh, engaging them to engage their audiences. And, and of late, you know, some of them have actually been caught uh, perhaps over uh, selling themselves out, as it were. Um, a lot of that will start to shift towards other content and, and video I think is going to be one of the, the huge beneficiaries of that because uh, when it comes down to it, um, yes, it, it, it takes more to integrate properly uh, with, a, with a video channel than it does just to ask someone to send a tweet. Uh, however, you also get a lot more out of it and the, uh, the believable nature of it going forward uh, is going to be much greater. I think the key um, is um, this great difference between uh, content and branded content. Uh, and creating right uh, effective branded content is much more difficult. Um, I think going forward, uh, it requires very strong strategic planning capability to make this uh, work. 
um, being how do you translate the marketing communication strategy into a social content strategy? What is the right uh, KOL network you want to engage? How do you um, engage the right creative resource to come up with the right story to tell, you know, to help your brand? All those things, it's uh, it's critical to, 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 to the success. Because we see many, many examples of having some brand message that's not powerful, that's not relevant, and that's not really the brand, branded content that we're talking about. We're talking about really uh, deploy the right branded content uh, through a, a well thought through strategy. I think that's something missing right now uh, and it's critical. Ali, Scott, Chris, thanks for being on Thoughtful China. That wraps it up for today. Be sure to subscribe to us on Yoku and YouTube. You can also follow us on Weibo and Twitter and join our LinkedIn group. See you again.